Good afternoon, Ruth Johnson representing Group One. We are number one. Please, if you're part of number one, give a shout out. A little louder, please. Okay. Uh, we ended up identifying two what's, and we uh, defined the initial what question is, what will it take to get our colleagues to support the Regional Transit Authority? And so one of the things we feel would be an important best method or practice would be to develop or update a plan and a planning process that would include funding, uh, bringing in subject matter experts, as well as public involvement. And the who's in implementing that strategy would be, of course, the RTA board because of the statute. But we also found that there are going to be some other important groups of people who need to be part of developing or updating the plan or being part of the planning process. And that would include local public officials, current users, transit workers, and the general public. The other thing we looked at is champions. And we defined champions as uh, people who, uh, c trusted messengers, people who have influence with different groups of people. And so one of the things you have to first do is identify the messengers, make specific or uh, people you want to be champions, uh, make some specific ask, and tailor those asks to their interests. So uh, one of the example was with an Illich. What is it into for him to be a champion of the Regional Transit Authority? And we didn't get a chance to identify the who's under the champions. All right, let's hear from group uh, two. some nice similarities here. Uh, we identified, uh, I mean, we got consensus around three what's. Uh, one zeroing in on the trust and specifically uh, establishing trust for the RTA throughout the region. And we talked about it through a number of ways. One, uh, it, 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 working with the RTA to establish, and I think Paul actually expressed some of the committees have been established. I believe it's actually very important that a communications committee is established as part of that. And through that, um, I mean, I, I actually develop and execute a uh, public communications plan. Uh, we also talked about the importance of transparency and, and making certain that all the discussions, all the information, everything that they're, that they're doing uh, is, is online and easily accessible for those who want to get access to that information but also clearly identifying what are those formal lines of communication so that John Q. Public can engage, the, uh, I mean, the advocacy community can engage, and a lot of others to ensure that we're being heard. I mean, that, I mean the, folks, the folks and voices in this room are being heard. Uh, many more folks that are not in this room that have an opportunity to be heard. Uh, another uh, what, uh, I guess in the who, we put the burden on the RTA to do that with support from all of us to strongly encourage action and help support them to be able to accomplish this and, and, and get, I mean, get that public outreach to a level that's, that's satisfactory to accomplish the objective. Uh, the second what, uh, it, and, we, and I think it's I mean, similar to I mean, something we've talked about, I mean, establishing a shared vision. And we spent a lot of time talking about how do, I mean, how, so how do you do that? And, uh, we put a lot of uh, focus on trying to find the commonalities between the entire region, uh, looking at the faith-based community, uh, but realizing where a lot of the organized faith-based community is focused and, and really pushing it to make sure that, I mean, organizing the faith-based community through the entire region. Uh, labor consensus is a conversation that came up, especially looking at some of the things that would result in the shortcomings of formal uh, past action. 
uh, and looking to our brothers and sisters in labor to, and I mean, someone, we didn't clearly identify who would be doing that, but ensuring that there's some sort of uh, consensus that's, I mean, developed there that is, I mean, fed to the ultimate plan that's ultimately developed. Um, we talked about large community buy-in, whether it's through getting individual leaders, cities, school boards, et cetera, throughout the entire region, taking direct action to support, support a plan, support a vision that's being developed so it can, again, further build support for that shared vision. Uh, uh, we highlighted the, the importance of the riders community, the disability community as well as, I mean, key, key, I mean, key entities. And I think that goes beyond some of the other, I mean, we could spend a lot more time capturing all the groups that need to have some sort of, uh, I mean, in some ways the way that this conference was developed, that sectors of our economy clearly represented, which directly nicely plugs into the formal lines of communication to, and to ensure that those, uh, those uh, viewpoints um, are, are heard and, uh, and considered part of a, a final, final program. Uh, and then who there obviously is a lot of the people who make up that community um, and probably some more formalized structures, some new structures that might be necessary to ensure that it's more encompassing of the entire region, that it's not, we don't lock ourselves into pockets within the region, that we approach this from a regional perspective. And then lastly, we talked about the, the absolute importance of an awareness campaign whether, I mean, establishing um, a formal advocacy organization, the C4 side, to start actively talking and promoting a plan. Uh, and it might make sense also from that to, I mean, a formal C3 entity um, to educate the public about this, whether it's through, through public entities altogether or a separate entity that can, can help do that. Uh, an effective communication that's, uh, I mean, very clear to identify the value of the return on investment. Uh, to, I mean, trust in this plan, that it is a product of the community. Uh, communicating that transit will help you, and if it doesn't help you specifically, it's going to help your neighbor in, in, in that um, person-centered uh, uh, communication. Uh, prove that it will work, and basically help I mean, achieve the needs of the community. So we, we talked, again, just geographically. Uh, workers to jobs have a horizontal movement in the northern end of the suburbs. Um, and, and not so much in north-south in, in general, and so we've got to make sure that we can address all the concerns of a region, and, uh, and, and, and coupled with that is this, uh, the, the comprehensive earned media campaign that's ongoing, or, I mean, the period of time up to the point in which the formal campaign actually occurs. And we had a lot of people that would be leading a lot of those, but I'd say our who's are a little weak in terms of s clear specifics. And that's it. Thank you, David. Okay, work group three. Three and four combined, I think it worked. All right. Yeah. All right, well, I think there was actually quite a bit of, of overlap between the discussions in groups two and then our combined groups three and four. Um, so I don't know, maybe that means that we're all somehow on the right track or moving in the right direction, perhaps. Um, we had uh, actually, rather than three, we had four top um, contenders for what we needed to be doing to to um, to generate support amongst our colleagues for regional transit. Um, the first one was similar to just describe what was just described, which is a, a clear shared vision of what our region should look like. So where we're going as a region, and um, what was acknowledged is that um, we have sort of a very good example in perhaps the Detroit Future City effort. Um, as a representation for the city of Detroit, we really don't have something that's comparable on a regional level. Um, and we think it's really important that people will be able to better understand um, the critical role that transit can play if we understand exactly where we want to go and be as a region. Um, so uh, the how to get to that was to uh, create the regional plan. Um, and uh, as a, an important element of that is understanding what the the composition of the region is. So we define that as at least four counties as well as the city of Detroit. Um, there was some discussion of uh, possibly the addition of Monroe County, but at least four counties um, plus the city of Detroit. Um, and again, just to reiterate that key observation, we don't believe that we currently have that shared vision for the region. Um, who would develop that? We suggested that it be a representative group 
that it include both public and private sector stakeholders, um, that it be representative of the regional geography. Um, and, uh, oh, I, which reminds me, um, one other suggestion was that uh, the city of Windsor should perhaps be included in, in that definition because they're so proximate. Um, so just a point for consideration. Um, and it also, we also, amongst the who's, decided that it should include existing collaborative bodies. Um, uh, so for example, uh, human services, perhaps human services bodies that have already conducted needs assessment uh, in the region. Uh, our second big what is a clear description of regional transit. So we began with a clear vision for the region, but moved to a clear description of what regional transit is. Um, really simple on the who and the how. Um, really the how would be that the RTA would create a new integrated plan for the region, um, not necessarily tossing out all the previous work, that's the, the good previous work that's been done, for example, the RT, RTCC and so forth. But, um, but we do need a new integrated plan for the region. Um, and we believe that the RTA should, should do that. Um, so for tr uh, a third one was trust, uh, which also I think came up in group two. Uh, how, do we, how do we generate and develop that sense of trust? Um, and, and just to clarify, this really had to do more with trust in the, um, uh, I really believe it's more sort of trust in the process uh, and the mechanics of actually getting the system up and running. Um, there are lots of other trust uh, areas in which we can build trust. We really were limiting it more to that. If I'm, if I'm, if I can just kind of editorialize a little bit on behalf of the group, I think that's what we were trying to articulate. How do we get there? Um, transparency, honesty, delivering quality services, um, conducting audits and reviews early and often, um, positive imaging, and stop doing the wrong things. Okay, uh, sorry, one last one. So as I said, we had four instead of three. So just as a bonus, um, <laughs> fundamental, uh, we do believe that a big, ha a big what should be coordinating all of the transit systems that exist. So uh, DDOT, SMART, uh, the new BRT, there should be coordination amongst and across. And um, how do we do that? Uh, we want to uh, do all that we can, I think, as, as uh, participants in this, effort here today to help the R help ensure that the RTA hires competent transit professionals. Oh man. <laughs> okay, I believe we have our last work group now, work group five. Here we go. All right, we were with uh, group five, and our discussion was consensus. And so we came up with uh, 14 what's, and we boiled that down to uh, two. Um, number one, explain the facts clearly and simply. This really was a big issue was how do we get the facts out to the people? If we want to build consensus, how do we get that information out to the public? Because we understood from the Atlanta and the St. Louis experience that this is a huge elephant and then how do we eat the elephant one piece at a time? And our first piece is just to get the facts out. And so then how do we do that? We want to get with uh, college students. We really wanted to engage the youth, and we saw that being the university students. And we have a huge group of universities and students in the southeast Michigan area. So you have Lawrence Tech, you've got Wayne State, you've got U of D, obviously. You've got uh, MSU, U of M have a uh, presence downtown, and you have the community colleges. So then how do we engage the students to do that? So we have them go out, disseminate information using uh, all types of media, social media, print, um, television, radio, um, community events, um, and then who does also who does this? And then we have transportation professionals and advocate advocates who are the ones who develop the talking points and the writing points. And we engage a uh, communications firm to ensure that we can distill all the facts and knowledge from transportation, because it can be a bit of a uh, boring and jargon-filled um, conversation. But if we're able to distill those facts and get it down to a digestible. Um, media and talking points and we'll have a much better time of getting this information out to the public at large. Number two, this was very difficult for us to come up with, so we had about uh, five different points, but trying to solve the problems of the world, we were able to get to uh, the top two for us uh, with a little bit of help actually. Um, and number two is going to be build trust. How do you build trust? We want to make sure that the 
that the audience that we are engaging and putting out our information to, that there's trust. And the, how do we do that? Listen to the people and listen to the opposition. A little bit of a Sun Tzu in there, know thy enemy. So know what their issues are and then be able to address them. But in addition, listen to the people who are going to be taking the transit and listen to the people that you are trying to get the information to. In addition, and how do we do that as well to get to build the trust is use non-traditional and traditional champions. So your community advocates, those who are in a trusted position and in a trusted position where it's not paid. So people will take what they say and say, this is an opinion leader. I trust what they have to say. But also use your traditional um, champions as well. So your athletes, your business leaders, people of that nature. But build that into a coalition that you can, that you can build trust and get the information out there. Thank you very much. All right, I think we want to adjust just a little bit of where this last voting effort. Um, because some of you have like something you could put some dots on and some of you don't. And also, the dots being the same color here, it's going to be tough for us to capture the sense of what were then the same colored dots that were used. So we might get things confused. I, I'd like to get a sense from the group if, if it's all right for me to do. Do you mind? Are you ready? Then there it is. Are you ready, Brandy? All right. You're got, you, now, here's the, here's the thing. You only got three, not five. So you got to think a little bit. Then we're going to have Art. We're going to do you and Megan. So go ahead. Come down. The cup is here. Think. Put. Put them on there. We're going to capture that. So what the what's, just the what's. Just the what's of what you consider to be the what's. You'll have to think about the house that they've come up with as well to see if it makes sense to you. But now, everybody gets three dots. Or just one. I'm here. Right. Closest to what you think are the most important. Like, right. Okay. You can put all dots on one item, or you can spread them around. Come on, voters. Yeah, try to cluster the dots. Here, Brandy, you, Brandy's going to give you some discussions. <laughs> Just, just that, uh, so we can photograph that. Please don't put any dots on the text because we're going to photograph this. But just cluster them around these blue circles so we can see where the convergences are. Thank you. Happy dot voting. Oh, we got some voters coming. Hang on. No hanging Chad, people. Now just, oh, why am I doing this? I'll be so glad I don't have to do this anymore. The rep These report outs, uh, if you contact Kevin, who was involved in the registration, give him your card, you'll get these report outs. So you can, and we do have two more presentations real quick that we want to get, and then a final close on what do you think might have been missing topics today that we need to think about for next steps? And what would be good next steps? So I know you, everybody's a little tired, but let's kind of just, we'll gather everything in the barn here for a minute and just see if we missed anything and what do you think is, is a good next step? While they're voting, I'm going to do a little multitask here. 
Mark Gazzetti is Vice President of Policy of the American Public Trust Association out of Washington, D.C. He's been watching all of this happen today. Uh, he's 32 year, uh, a veteran of 32 years old and a 32-year-old veteran of public transportation at the local, state, and national levels. He's responsible for extensive policy research, the agenda, the policy analysis, development, you name it. I think there's a lot that he can offer. Our, has spent 16 years in the management of the New Jersey Transit Corporation, the Pittsburgh Port Authority of Allegheny County, along with two years at New Jersey DOT. So let's, let's, welcome, let's welcome Art. Thank, thank you, Chris. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a few uh, thoughts from up here. Uh, Art Gazzetti, I'm the Vice President for Policy at the American Public Transportation Association. That's all the transit systems around the country and the businesses that work with them. One thing I've learned today, uh, that the core of ab advocates that you've had at work here today uh, have done can do a great job in making the case for the next step forward in public transit in the metro uh, Detroit region. It's the end of the day. Uh, what I am going to, I'm going to be short, uh, short on details, but uh, uh, I hope I make up for that in enthusiasm because I think you have a home run and something going on here. A wealth of ideas, positive energy. APTA was a minority investor in this event and we're happy to be a partner uh, going forward. One thing about th this conversation is not new. It's one of the most frequent questions asked of APTA. How can uh, transit organized in many ways around the country, how can it be uh, organized in a regional manner? And uh, if you look at uh, the United States from a satellite, what you see is not the geography of states. You don't see counties or cities. You see the glow, the economic glow of regions. So if that's the way the economies are working, that's the way that transit systems should work too. It's up to everyone how you organize that. But as a general megatrend, uh, it's all in uh, the regions. Uh, yet your challenges are indeed unique, I'm aware of, of that. Uh, nationwide public transportation is a $57 billion business every day. There are 36 million boardings. It is a big deal. Uh, now it happens through a partnership. The partnership is federal, state, local, and private. It's a four-legged stool. Everyone has to lift a little bit of the weight. But if you look at the success stories around the country, and we heard a bunch of them today, Los Angeles, Denver, the San Francisco Bay Area, St. Louis, all of those started with self-help. And all you need here, the folks in California will remind you, all you need here is 50%. So you got something good going for you uh, already. Um, so as uh, how can the metro Detroit region uh, uh, regroup, move ahead? Uh, it's, it's essential to do that around transit, that's for sure. A report that's coming out on the 13th of June by a conservative group in Washington, the Free Congress Foundation it's called. Uh, but the, the core of that report says any region, any American region uh, that wants to be appealing, to business, to be attractive to millennials, uh, to be a place that will grow and prosper and become a true uh, champion of a city, uh, it, it has to do it around transit. There's no way looking forward uh, that it can be done uh, otherwise. Another report that came out recently uh, by APTA in March uh, said that you know real estate in proximity to transit has higher value than real estate uh, not served uh, by transit. So there's a, there's a lesson there in value. Public is voting with its feet and it's with, with its wallets, three ways. Uh, one, ridership has been up, far outpacing population growth, far outpacing growth in highway use, vehicle miles traveled, and it's been doing that for 17 years. So there's one litmus test. Uh, another litmus test would be elections. And as you've heard Jason and others say, last year when, fifth, when 49 out of 62 times people went to the ballot box and yet said, yes, we want transit in our community, and yes, we're willing to pay more for it, well, there is certainly a message uh, there. You heard the, uh, the concept. Uh, many of us use it. Uh, uh, all of us benefit from it. 
I'm paraphrasing that, Tom, but that, I'm close. Uh, uh, that's a, a good concept. You know, now, your plan going forward, and you have a lot of these thoughts going on here, uh, should it be a transport, uh, public transit plan, or should it be a public transportation and land use plan? incorporate that kind of thinking. Should it be a transportation plan or should it be a transportation slash manufacturing slash skill building plan? So there's a lot of things you can throw together. I like that thought today about uh, uh, be careful on the 30 year plans because that outlives the life of many elected officials and a lot of people don't think 30 years from now is going to benefit them much. 10 years, uh, if you have a 30-year plan, make sure there's some short-term uh, deliverables in it. Again, we've seen these things uh, many times around the country. Uh, make, I love that comment that Jason made. Make sure the public understands what they are buying and feels uh, connected to it. APTA, uh, we want to be an ongoing partner. We're at the national level. We've been around uh, since 1882. We're going to be around a lot more. and. Uh, uh, I think I can speak with the, for the Center of Transportation Excellence and the National Alliance of Public Transportation Advocates on that too. So it's all in the partnerships and from the federal side, uh, I, I hope we will be a good partner to you from that end. Thank you. We're going to have a couple remarks from Megan. I might have something to say right at the end, but let me, let me introduce Megan just briefly. She's the Executive Director of Transportation Riders United, TRUE. It was founded in 1999. It's a nonprofit transit advocacy organization dedicating to improving and promoting public transit throughout the greater Detroit area. She served as the Oakland County, on the Oakland County Public Transit Authority, which oversees SMART in Oakland County and the Transportation Advisory Committee of SEMCOG. She's active in the state Trans 4M coalition. Previously, she spent six years with, I'm going to say, Public Interest Research Group in Michigan and serves on their board of directors. Let's welcome Megan, please. Excellent. I guess, it, uh, I guess it's up to me to recap in case anyone can't see in the back here. Uh, we have had quite a uh, impressive voting here, um, lots of fabulous ideas. The one that stood out uh, highest among this group with 29 votes is establishing trust. And I think we all understand that this region has for, uh, for, for many, many years lacked trust. Uh, a lot of people within the city uh, don't trust the suburbs and feel like they're out to get them. A lot of people in the suburbs don't trust the city and point to all of the scandals and mismanagement. Uh, there's a lot of, of distrust and there has been for many years. So making sure that we can establish trust throughout the region, I would say both, I, I would broaden that out to say both establishing trust broadly uh, within the region and then also making sure that the RTA is an agency that we can trust. Uh, that's obviously a huge issue, making sure that, uh, that there is that transparency uh, and open communication, that people really see that the RTA as an agency above reproach, uh, above question, I think is going to be essential as we move forward. Um, also establishing a shared vision, got 21 votes. I think that is certainly very powerful. We need to know where are we going as a region and look for those commonalities across the region, uh, creating buy-in. That's, that's been a challenge. Uh, we don't, it's interesting, just a couple of days ago, the RTA officially approved uh, two transit plans. And while Washtenaw County may have a slightly different experience, I would bet 99% of the people in the Tri-County area are not familiar with the fact that there even is a regional transit plan for Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb counties. Uh, let alone any sense of, of ownership and buy-in towards that. So ensuring that as that's updated, um, at, uh, that, that there is real buy-in in a vision for what transit can be is going to be very powerful. Okay. We were very distinct. We, 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 said we need to have that. We just might 
I'm, I'm sorry. The, we really need to begin thinking like a region in, a, in, in ways that go far beyond transit in order to get the buy-in of regional transit. That's, that's the only distinction I was trying to make. Thanks. I think that's a good point. Obviously, anytime we're summarizing things, we're going to put a lot into that. But the, I think what he's saying is establish a, a shared vision for our region. What, what is our vision of, of being a region? So those are definitely some very powerful ideas. And I would say all of these are, are definitely things that we need to move forward on. Um, making sure that there is awareness and coordination, that people get the facts, uh, that we have strong champions, that we have an understanding of what regional transit is. This, this is a lot of very good ideas um, and a, a lot of very powerful ideas. I want to throw, I want to share a couple of things. Um, I, I wish I had a, 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 a smooth and, and, and pithy connection, a little challenge of uh, being the wrap-up speaker after all of these ideas is uh, I couldn't really prepare to know where you guys were all going to take this. So I don't really have a smooth, pithy transition into the things that I wanted to share of next steps. But um, I do think uh, it is important that we take at least a few minutes to talk about what is, well, what's going on now. Uh, we're not starting from zero. This region, there's been a lot of very important efforts going forward uh, on transit uh, in this area uh, that we need to that we need to interconnect so I um, didn't put up any fancy PowerPoints and I hope folks can read but um, so when we talk about what's next so we have a regional transit authority that's huge that we finally have an agency an entity in charge of improving and coordinating transit for the region one of the very next things that they're going to be doing within the next month or two is developing a citizens advisory committee uh, between 10 and 30 people from across the four county area, uh, specifically including riders, seniors, people with disabilities, the business community, et cetera. Um, so that's going to be a huge next step that can help uh, advance the RTA. They're also going to be hiring a CEO and staff that ties into this suggestion of how do we make sure that uh, um, assure that RTAs hire competent transit professionals. Well, they're going to be hiring um, in the next several months. And then they are going to be updating that plan. So a lot of these things that we're talking about are moving forward uh, within the RTA already. There's also uh, several transit projects under development uh, on Woodward, both the M1 rail streetcar uh, that could go into construction uh, later this year and be riding by 2015. There's also alternatives analysis on Woodward uh, that is likely to move into a bus rapid transit project uh, to, uh, for the area. There's also public education efforts going forward um, between University of Detroit Mercy here um, and Transportation Riders United, my organization. Um, we've been doing some surveying of what is where is the public stand on this? What are the messages that are effective in building public support? And we're going to be doing a broad, True's going to be doing a major public outreach campaign to build support and get people involved. Um, and then this fall, we're going to be doing some more surveying to figure out, is it working? Where are people? Oh, OK. Is this one? Hello? Is this one working? Can folks hear? OK. Um, and then there will need to be more outreach. So these, and then really, in a lot of ways, what all of these tie into, um, all of these things, the RTA with its advisory committee and staff and plan, ultimately, they're going to need some money um, to make any of this happen. The, uh, these transit projects are going to need some money. Um, and so in uh, November 2014, um, I should be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. Uh, there is the potential to put a, camp, uh, a ballot measure forward. Uh, and so we need to be thinking backwards of what is it going to take to to build that public support um, uh, so that we can have funding for all of these pieces. So I think uh, a lot of the efforts that are referenced uh, in our brainstorm there are already moving forward. And there is a huge opportunity to get involved. And I guess 
the the other the last thing I want to say is to um, invite all of you to be involved and to take action and to and some of, take um, not to let it stop here. I I hope everyone got and actually I think it, if you didn't receive in your um, in your group, uh, then we will be distributing, uh, as you head out of the room here, a commitment sheet asking what are you willing to do? Are you willing to help be involved as this moves forward? Are you help willing to help gather those champions and build that campaign? Can we count on you to be an ambassador to your networks, to your community? Because we are going to need everyone uh, to be involved, to spread the word, uh, to do that awareness, to tell your networks. Um, there's a threat against the the the, um, the uh, RTA in the legislature for an opt-out bill. Make sure you're telling your le your legislators that this is something that really matters. So, um, okay. <laughs> um, I guess I'm turning it back over to Chris here uh, to do a little wrap up. But thank you everyone for being here uh, um, and. We'll look forward to seeing you in the morning for more uh, concrete actions that we can take. There, there's an evaluation form, Megan. Should they be filling that out on the back as well? Yes. Do the commitment and. All right. Okay. Just a, a just a, a thought for what it's worth is is. Uh, the National Academies did a study on what were the most collaborative governments or nations in the world. And one that was picked was uh, Finland. And Finland, when it had its forest industry completely destroyed, um, it then set up a collaborative body that would look at the transparency of its government and the decisions that it was making. Just a suggestion is that we can have subject matter specificity and transparency but also we should remember the need for being collaborative and building trust and keeping that in the front. So a, a process body that respects collaboration is, the, in our view at the Institute, is the new ism. So, okay, well, I think, uh, Marie, do you have anything else? Yeah, I really don't. don't. Leo, anything? Just trying to make sure All right, <laughs> Megan. So I guess just to clarify, there's one sheet that everyone should have on one side, it's got uh, commitments, asking what are you willing to do uh, and how are you willing to be involved as we move forward. It's got a couple of things you can check off um, about being willing to reach out to your networks. It's also um, got some space for new ideas that you have. So um, if please fill that out. The back of it is evaluation. Let us know what you think of the day, what worked, what didn't. Um, please be... Uh, uh, Please be specific uh, and let us know how uh, events like this can be better in the future. After this, we have a reception, um, which, where is our, okay, back where we ate lunch, uh, there will be a happy hour reception, a chance to mix and mingle and, and process all of the things that, uh, that we've talked about here today. Uh, so we've tossed out a lot of ideas. So please do join us over there for that and then be back here tomorrow morning at 8.30. I also just want to recognize all of our sponsors for, for the event today. Uh, we have the Kresge Foundation, uh, APTA, Transform, uh, the uh, U.S. Department of Transportation through, the, through RITA, through the Mineta National Transportation Research or Transit Research Coalition that we're part of, and and uh, since we're on the cusp of going to have a beer or a glass of wine, that has been sponsored by a separate grant from Giffels Webster. None of that, none of that foundation money or government money goes for the alcohol. But Giffels Webster was nice enough to say, "We'll we'll buy you a drink," um, and uh, none of the um, none of your registration money went for that either. Just to just to clarify for everyone, we're not. We're not spending your money on, on the beer and wine, just Giffel's Webster's money. Trust. 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 And, if you, and if you know of anybody who, might, who you think might want to come tomorrow that's not here today or registered, that wants to hear what you've heard from some of our speakers, bring them. Because I think the more people who understand, the better. 
So don't, if they haven't registered, that's fine. Just bring them and we'll deal with it in the morning. But thank you all for coming. Oh, and Chris wants to. Chris has got to pitch his party again. Right. Uh, just want to repeat, 68 Taylor, if anyone uh, can show up. We got a few takers already. So um, that is um, off Woodward, three houses west of Woodward, three quarters mile north of the Fisher Building. And um, I uh, got the house about six months ago and I'm fixing it up, but it does have a functioning bathroom. <laughs> um, it, pardon me? Yes. Um, and it's kind of fun. It's a cool neighborhood. So it, you, and it, it might give a picture of how when we return to Detroit, some of us who left, um, what it would look like when we have a whole neighborhood with transit intact um, right along Woodward or Claremont or wherever. So please come.